Hi, Rob Perkin coming to you from uh, J. Nicholas uh, Studio so 1A here. Where are we at? Nice. Going to tie a winter steelhead, uh, my variation of an uh, intruder. Uh, it's going to be a pink and purple guy. They don't Pink doesn't work very well, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. See what we can do here. So I'm going to start out, uh, I already pre-tied, save a little bit of time, some Senyo um, intruder wire onto a 40 millimeter uh, uh, shank there. So wrapped it to the front of the hair all the way back, kind of doubled it over for some security over there. And just have enough here just to get our a size two or four hook through. So I keep that as short as I can, that loop. Then we're just going to um, tiny little uh, purple chenille. Uh, Rob, do you glue your, uh, your base I, there or not? Sometimes. This time I did not. Um, I found with this with this wire, the Cine wire, it, it has that coating on it, and boy, it really, it sticks well. I've never had a problem with it pulling it at all, so. Um, I'm just gonna get a nice little ball here. I asked Jeff Hickman that question. He said he doesn't need to add cement when he lashes on his mono. I mean, I think this is much more secure than the, the 12 pound leader I'm using, so I, you know, if anything's gonna give, it's not gonna be this right here, I don't think, I always think, so. Start with that there. I'm going to tie in, um, let's do uh, just a little purple hackle in the back here. So what's the purpose of that purple? I like to, just a little bit more to kind of give it uh, the contrast and a little lady motion and also help stand it up a little bit more when I add, add in the rhea here and everything kind of just helps splay it out a little more. And this, you could use uh, a saddle hack learning. This is a schlop in here, uh, which works great for this. So sometimes I see people using, you know, if they're gonna use a purple hackle there, they might use a pink, um, a little contrast pink chenille, for the, yeah, for the contrast, chenille. And yeah. call and it that, trigger points yeah. or strike points. What, what's your thought on that? Um, I like that a lot. So this just happened to be uh, what we have here today is the purple chenille. So went with this, but uh, normally I do like to have a little more contrast on this piece. I figure we're going to be adding um, some pink to other parts of this. So not too worried about it. I think it'll still have a nice contrast, but um, always a good idea to have that in there as well. Well, I also know some folks who think that there are days when having that bright pink spot at the back is a detriment rather than a benefit and mm -hmm. they would rather fish it like like you're tying it here with with just the purple so i i, I think it goes both i think ways. it depends on the fish right what mood they're in a little bit you just never know make sure i don't grab the uh Scissors are meant for cutting the wire. Get two separate turns there. All right. Get that kind of splayed back. Nice. And this fly is pretty similar to the one you've hooked fish on already this year? Yes, it is. It's a, uh, so the other version was more of a um, solid purple version of that one actually, but this mm -hmm. one's gonna be, yeah, have a little more pink highlights to it, so. I'm going to do a dubbing loop here. We're going to try and wrap in some Predator Wrap and our Rhea here. You are a brave man. We'll see how it works on camera. <laughs> it's my first time doing this here, so at home it's a lot easier, I think. Let's uh, see what we get. So you wax your loop with... Just to way. help, because I don't like building too much bulk <clears throat> with these, so I don't, I don't use a lot of dubbing within to, to kind of as a lot of people do, they'll kind of hold the materials together that way. Um, so I'm just using a little bit of wax in there to, to kind of hopefully serve that purpose. I don't have to have it so much bulk, so much bulk in there. Yeah, we're actually going to take this and we'll use about half that length for this guy. I'm going to set that aside for a second while I get, I'm going to take out some, um, some barred Rhea. Nice. And that 
that's exactly what I want to do right here. What brand of shank are you using? This is a this is a Senyo's Senyo uh, shank, yeah. yeah shank. Larger size. That's a forty. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna put in the Predator wrap first. And try and get this uh, kind of spread out equally on here before we do much with it. All right. Do you ever use a pedaging tool? Yes. Or yeah. Something. Clown? Uh, you need some scissors to trim those butts. So what I'll do is um, I usually try and get them a little closer and then I'll trim them as I wrap it in. Ah. Uh, I'm just going to put these down there in case you need them. Thank you. <clears throat> Good spin on here. Wow, that looks so good. Get a little fishy there. A couple more spins to it. And I'll take and just kind of work this back one direction. Patiently work this back, which you need it to be. So you're kind so of guiding away. those fibers with your yeah, index finger exactly. while you're rotating okay. the butt. Yeah. Place. You are a rat towards you person. I hadn't noticed that before. <laughs> It's kind of how I want this one to be back here, so pretty good shape. I'm going to use some Lagerton Gold for the, the body portion of this. Carded Port. flat braid. It's yes, a little bit flat wider braid. than the mini yeah. flat braid. Yeah, I love this stuff for this kind of situation. So. It's really nice stuff. It, uh, it lays exceptionally <clears throat> flat and it's very durable. Yeah, I use this on a lot of flies now, days with the. Uh, between salmon and steelhead flies, this is the stuff. And I'll wrap it. Work about there. Good point. 
point. Plenty of room in the front here. I'm going to take and put another little ball of the purple chenille in here. So sometimes people will, will uh, spin Arctic Fox or American Possum yeah. and do the same thing here. The idea would be to create some uh, a bump, down a good bump, basically to, to uh, give loft to your materials that are going to follow. Help them stand out. Okay. For this I have, for the front portion I do have some uh, pink schlock going here. Hot. Pink, hot pink. Schlappen. Yes. I don't know what's going on over there, but. Well, I, you know, I, uh, <laughs> I, I posted a picture to Instagram a few minutes ago, and half the people in the garage here liked it okay. within. 10 seconds. And they're the only ones that have liked it. So. Yeah, they're the only <laughs> ones who have liked it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so let's see what we got. Jay's garage can be a tough crowd. <laughs> yeah, it's a very, very tough Starting crowd. Starting to feel the pressure. <laughs> So if you're using the cutting surface of your scissors to fold your hackle, I guarantee they're old. They're the perfect. They're the scissors. perfect scissors for that job. That's right. That's why I have that pair. Right? That's right. The, the, they serve two purposes: to cut my wire and to fold back the uh, my hackles. So, and they're they're that sharp. Yes. <laughs> so th this fly is uh, not only named as an intruder, cla classified as an intruder, but it's also going to meet one of the... Um, so you have the two stages, right? Yeah, the criteria. It's got a butt station and a shoulder and, station. And if you leave the criteria right at that, we're in good shape. Yeah, we can, yeah. yeah. well that's good it's, enough for me. Yeah. A lot of my intruders, um, the front station is dense enough or long enough that it kind of flows into the rear station. And that's, um, yeah, that holds true with a lot of the ones that I tie as well. So yeah. you'll see that here with a little bit. All right, what should we add now? Let's, um, let's actually put some uh, UV Polar Chanel and some copper in there. I just like the color on this. It really adds a little bit to the, to the fly. I started using this actually this year and, and love what you get out of it. So I'll tie in a little bit of this here. It does go uh, the back one direction here, so you make sure you tie it in correctly, and then I actually will spin it a little bit as well to uh, kind of just take this, help manage it a little better, it seems like. And, uh, Rob is uh, spinning that. You know, I've, I've also found that a nice little touch to, uh, it makes it more like a hackle, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah. You're not dealing with fighting it that one direction the whole time, I think. It's right. much easier to deal with this. And it actually, it, I like the, the little, again, it adds a little more bulk to it this way. So yeah. um, maybe just, maybe one more here. We'll see, can we get, Without adding too much, uh, that's too much. It's only too much if you run out of room at the end, <laughs> end of your shank. <laughs> Which we could. Which we Where could. We could. Yeah. That looks. Kind of 
I'll wrap back over that a little bit to kind of help a little bit there. Okay, liking that okay. That'll work out. I see another loop in the works here. Yeah, so we're gonna do similar to what we did in the, the, the back station there. We're gonna um, add in um, some of the pink uh, Rhea, and we're gonna actually add in some um, Lady Amherst in the purple here as well. Again, the same, same loop. So find some good. So what are you looking at for the length of this? Yeah, these are a little shorter, but I, I usually like to have that the front length actually come up, come back over to to the back portion here a little, little more. These are going to probably come be a little bit shorter. Okay. It'll be fine. But um, yeah, that's usually what I'm looking for. There is something that kind of comes back and covers the back. First here you gotta it really sticks together well so <clears throat> try and brush it out a little bit pre mm -hmm. and then also once I get it in there as well Now, I, I noticed you were using one of those new loon <laughs> dubbing twisters. How There's a lot like of great it? ones out there right now. How do you like it? Love this one. Yeah, Love I've been it. using it for the last, uh, uh, well, three, four months, and it's been it's been great. I love the weight on it. Uh, doesn't roll around on you, obviously, when it's at your tying area. Um, really spins well, pretty compact, and it's easy to... Um, to actually use after you dub to wrap with the nice hook here to wrap around uh, the fly. So if I don't breathe, maybe I can get these to come and tease them the way I need them here. Get the other materials out of there and spins very well. Brush this out some. Again, the Amherst really wants to stick to itself. So. Uh, remind me what thread you're using. Um, this thread is. I mean, is it a real strong? I, I, it is a very strong thread. The reason um, I ask is that um, that's a pretty tough dubbing brush. And um, it's actually yeah. It's this is. An, an eyeliner. Uh, yeah, kind of it's an I, eyeliner. I, yeah, took it from my wife's uh, little kit. She goes through those quite a bit, it seems like. So, yeah. Let's 
so it is a, a pretty strong dubbing brush that it seems to I like I like how it works for this so it works does its job It'll be a little wild, but um, once you put the finishing, you know, wraps around it, it, it'll lay the way you want it to. So don't worry too much about this right now. I really like the combination of the pink and purple. The combination can work really well. Yeah. Sometimes. Now, is, is there a, a certain between. color water you would tend to fish this a, a fly of this color? I, I describe this fly as, as it's got this some, is more my high water kind yeah, of fly. High yeah. water, uh, green, greenish, steelhead green. Yeah, like uh, Monday of this week would be a <laughs> yeah. great time for this fly. Yeah. It's two, two days so from today. Falling, falling flow. Mm -hmm. You know that, that uh, yeah, dropping levels that are just coming into shape. This would be the fly. That I would use. Can't release this video until Tuesday. And <laughs> <laughs> again, we're going to take and trim off all these fibers here. So I think um, sometimes I'll add at this point um, some a guinea feather in the front here to kind of finish it off with the collar. Um, I think we're just going to finish it off with some some saddle wings and and call that good. So add those now and try and get a couple here that are very similar. Are you putting those feathers on top? I am tying them the in on top, yes. Okay. okay. And so you could just leave this as is fish great um, and a lot of times in higher water actually this this might be the way to go because you're going to find a lot of a lot of those fish in in close to the bank so you may not need it as weighted as you as you might think um, in that kind of water but i am going to add some little uh, some small tungsten pseudo eyes to the bottom so you get a little little deeper um, just add a little bit of weight to help it get down on that initial setup and I'm tying those into the, the bottom of the fly, so it'll ride true there as well. Kind of helps with that on this fly as well. Finish it off with a little bit of a 
super glue. And you're all set. There's a... Uh, like a trigger fly rod. Thank you very much.